Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And today we're going to have a little video for you. I know it's been a while. In today's video, we're going to put this motor into that car. The car is a 1979 Volkswagen Super Beetle convertible, which we just showed you one, I think, in our last little video series. We showed one of these. Um, this one's not as nice. That one had been restored. Uh, this one is not in that great a condition comparatively, but we're just going to give you a, a little view of uh, part of the process. This, of course, is where the motor is going to go. It's going to be mounted inside the engine bay here. And uh, Along with that, we're going to replace the throwout bearing. We always replace the throwout bearings, and you'll never ever have to think about it again. It's uh, the last time you'll ever do that. And so, what we've got back here is we've got our component mounting board where we have our uh, inverter and our throttle, our shunt, and our main contactor, as well as uh, a terminal strip and some relays. Now all of this is mounted uh, to the firewall, but it stands off from the firewall about an inch and a half to allow air to circulate on the back side. There's our cooling, our coolant reservoir that will be uh, part of our cooling system to keep this inverter cool. Note we always use a secondary throttle return spring. That's one of those things you always want to do. So anyway, it's getting ready right now for the installation of the motor. So we haven't replaced uh, the um, throwout bearing yet. Haven't cleaned things up. But that's what we're getting ready to do. Let me show you uh, a little more of the conversion. So as we do on all of the Super Beetle uh, conversions, we've added the center console, which holds all our gauges. And uh, when we turn on the ignition, you'll see that the green light comes on, let us know that uh, the ignition's on. This right here is our re electronic reverse. Uh, let's just know it's in reverse. So that's how we handle the dash. Because these dashes don't lend themselves to modification, so we add the console. We are finishing the bottom balancing, so the batteries are uh, being ready to be installed. This is the uh, front cover on that front battery box which has our charge port on the right the uh, um, charger in the center there and then a uh, relay and component box on the left side there so that's just a quick overview now back to the motor well the typical motor that we put in the VW Beetles is the High Performance Electric Vehicle Systems AC50. So this is, a, I believe it's an eight and a half inch diameter motor. It's about, oh, 14 inches long or so. And it's uh, uh, used with the uh, 1238 Curtis controller that you saw a moment ago. And it's good up to 130 volts, 650 amps and puts out about 76 horsepower and 120 pound-feet of torque. So they're a nice little motor. They fit the uh, Beetle nicely. The, uh, the uh, power band peaks out about 3,800 RPMs, so right about 80 miles an hour on most of them, and, uh, which is about as fast as you comfortably want to cruise in a VW Beetle. It'll go faster than 80. That's just you know, where it's uh, peaking in its power band. So, what we have to do is we need to put this coupler 
onto this shaft. Now, this is called an interference fit, which means that it won't just slide on. It won't go on, okay? Which means that we're gonna have to heat this coupler in order to get it to slide on this shaft. And so that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna heat this up. You can heat them up in an oven, uh, a hot plate. Um, and so at this location, I got a hot plate. I'm gonna stick it on the hot plate, let it heat up, put on some welding gloves, and then slide it onto the shaft. This is a shot of the uh, coupler on my hot plate. And we're gonna heat it up to over 500 degrees. So I'm heating up the coupler and I've got the key in place in the keyway on the motor shaft. Got my gloves, just waiting for it to heat up and uh, it should slip on. Okay. I think it's hot enough. Let's see if we can put this on without burning myself here. Well, here it is. And we want to kind of hold it in place. Make sure you know, it bombed out and it stays there. So you heard it clink, went on, bottomed out. I like to just hold them until it cools a little bit just to make sure. So I'm going to let it cool down. Once it cools down, then we'll put the little set screw in with some Loctite on it. That'll go in there. But uh, wait for it to cool off before I do that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on the adapter and we want to set the orientation the way that we want it so that the uh, wiring is in the position that we want in reference to the top of our adapter. And then what I like to do is I run all the bolts in, pull that adapter uh, in place, make sure everything's centered real nice. Then I'm gonna pull the bolts back out, put some blue Loctite on them, and then torque them down. So once I have my adapter in place and tightened down, again, like I said, we use blue Loctite on those bolts. Next, I'm putting the flywheel on. And again, with uh, this style, Porsche style uh, flywheel, we're gonna use Loctite on these bolts also. With the uh, standard VW gland nut, you use that locking washer and uh, no Loctite required. Definitely don't wanna use it. Those things are torqued to like 219. Uh, foot pounds. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, Loctite those. Again, I pulled it down, made sure it's centered and in proper position. Notice the use of this piece of uh, angle that we have bolted to the flywheel. That's going to allow me to torque this down without the flywheel spinning because it will spin very easily uh, because there's nothing to, to hold it still. Okay, I've got those all tightened down. Uh, don't think I mentioned it a moment ago, but uh, don't forget to put your pilot bearing in on, uh, on these uh, custom uh, lightened flywheels. The, there's a pilot bearing that needs to be added. You need to put that in place. Of course, with the stock land nut, the pilot bearing is installed already. So with the clutch installed, we're ready to put this in the car. So let's get it off the workbench and over to the car. So we have these things strapped down to the workbench so they can't move or fall or anything. So the one thing I liked about the old 
net gain DC motors was that they had a spot for a lifting eye and that was handy. These don't have it so we have our special rope that we always use. Now that we have the uh, flywheel and adapter and everything on it, it's going to change that center of weight, so I've got to catch it in a different spot here. I think that'll be close. Bring over our, our uh, hoist and uh, lift it off the workbench. So I lift it up off the workbench a little bit, check to make sure that uh, the weight is centered. I mean, if you're a tough guy, you could just lift this off by hand. They're only about 125 pounds complete like this. Um, and in my younger day, I probably would have. Uh, with age comes uh, the wisdom that it's not worth the chance of hurting my back. So I'm going to let it, you know, a uh, piece of equipment do it for me. Roll this away from the workbench. I'm going to use the same cradle that I used on the workbench. We're going to stick it in our transmission jack, just like yay. I'll lower this down. There you have it, ready to roll. I like using the transmission jack because that allows us to articulate and get this thing lined up just perfectly. And so I've got it in, I've got the top two bolts in place, snugged up. You want to be continually checking to make sure that the you're able to rotate the um, the shaft that it's not binding and you want to make sure that you can rotate it at three a full 360 degrees so it doesn't bind somewhere you know unexpected so now I'm going to lower my transmission jack out of the way and then I can put those last two bolts in place the cradle of the jack kind of interferes with them but because there's a locating ring on the adapter. Once it's in and snug there, uh, those two bolts hold it in place, no problem. So that's putting the motor in. Um, it, it's a tight fit here. Okay, and so what you're going to do, and because of my neighbors who are making a lot of noise, I didn't video uh, that portion of it, but what, what you want to do is you want to tilt the motor and allow the transmission shaft to go inside the splines of the clutch. And so you do that and, and clear this piece right here, this back apron. So you do that by having the motor at an angle, okay? Front up, back down. Until you clear those splines and you can slide the motor forward a little bit to clear the rear apron and then you raise and level the motor out kind of simultaneously and bring it up to where it's uh, parallel here and let it slide in let that input shaft go in to the uh, clutch splines and uh, and into the, your pilot bearing it's uh, it's not a big deal. It's probably one of the easiest vehicles on the road to do. Um, and since that's all there is, is those four bolts holding it in place, it's definitely the easiest. Every other vehicle on the planet just about has a motor mount that you're going to have to fabricate and, and, and come up with. And it's typically a three-point mounting two mounts on either side of the motor and one on the tail shaft of the transmission. That's how most gasoline engines are, are mounted in a vehicle. 
unless of course you have front wheel drive, you know, front engine, front wheel drive. Then it's a, a little bit different. But still, this is the easiest that, you know, it doesn't get much easier than this. So anyway, uh, just thought I'd show you this real quick. Unfortunately, we had a major interruption with uh, the people across the parking lot here that had some kind of grand reopening or something and they had loud music and people and so anyway I didn't think they'd ever leave but it's quiet now and so anyway kind of get to see the uh, conclusion so next you know we're going to cut the cabling that goes from the uh, inverter to the motor we make our little pan that goes in here, you know, cover, uh, install the cooling system, plug in our wiring harness, those kind of things, kind of clean things up. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, got to install the batteries still on this particular project and, uh, and wire them up and then charge that pack. Like I said earlier, we're just finishing the bottom balancing. So it all, all kind of comes together at the same time, which is what you want. And uh, so anyway, if you have any questions or comments, don't leave them on the YouTube channel because we really don't monitor that. And if anyone monitors, it's usually someone who can't answer the questions. So send them to info at ev and we'll be happy to answer any questions. See you next time.